Welcome today. Uh, look, guys, thank you very much. Very exciting um, uh, pitch. Thanks for. Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna crack it. Get it. Get it started. Um, can I go back a little bit? Because uh, um, with a bit of the origin story, and I'll start with you, Scott. Harvard PhD. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I got. Well, a PhD. Tell us a little bit about. Tell us a little bit about how the team formed and and uh, you know um, this problem became a business for you guys. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I've actually, I spent, you know, so after getting the PhD, I left academia and went into industry. So I went straight into energy and so I've been spending my entire career, 15 to 20 years or so in energy. And what was interesting was I was always coming at it from the business side, the engineering side. And so developing technology, scoping out technology, hardware, um, my previous venture was actually a robotic sailboat for marine data collection. But what was interesting was about, maybe say about four years ago, I actually put solar on my own house down um, here in Austin. And that was actually really cool because I went from that kind of the technology side into becoming a consumer. And so that really was an eye-opening experience. And so what we realized was that, you know, people were buying into this new energy this new technology, this new energy transformation. But like I said in the pitch, I mean, the it's being coupled with a really arcane business practices. And then people just don't really think about energy in general. And so, and that's primarily because the industry is so immature, they haven't developed all the tools that's necessary. So I took it from a consumer experience and I realized that that was what was missing that customer experience, that focus on the consumer, the user experience, how can people actually understand energy when there was a study in 2016 by Accenture that found that Americans think about energy for about eight minutes a year. And so things are starting to change and that happens with solar. And so we wanted to try to change that. So I started the company, um, went and pitched this idea to the solar company that I, that's installed solar in my house. And the owner said, I've been wanting to do this for the past two years. Um, I want something like this. And he became our first customer because he himself, his company became our first customer before we even had a product. Um, he himself invested in our company. And then I was able to recruit some great guys to join um, the, the team. So we incorporated about two years ago. We spent a lot of time in, uh, we take a very design thinking approach to the problem. So there is a lot of time spent um, talking to the homeowners who had solar, talking to the solar companies, the people that worked there to really understand what those issues were, some of the nuances. And then from that design process, we then went and built it. So we launched the product just last year um, and then able to bring Emmett on board. Emmett brings in, you know, probably, I don't know, 15 years or so of solar experience. Yeah, um, I mean, for 40 hour work weeks. Then, yeah. yeah. 15 years. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so look, just every, for everyone that's joining us, feel free to ask questions in the um, in the Q and A thing you'll find in the center uh, panel there. And uh, I'll be kind of bouncing back and forth. And just so you know, um, I'm just going to go through the story a few times as people bounce back and forth through the rooms, and then take these questions periodically. Um, and then the the product itself became like sort of like you you know the consumer's interface with the solar panel that they knew nothing you know they didn't know anything that was what was going on with their solar panel right that's kind of the, yeah. the premise of it all. Well, yeah, exactly. What was interesting when you think about it is you know people are putting down um, quite a bit of money for solar in this you know there's subsidies by the governments, but in the U.S. they're putting down let's say approximately twenty thousand dollars out of pocket um, and but they're buying into the vision, into the impact of making um, of solar, of this new energy transformation. But the sad fact is it becomes almost like your air conditioning where as long as it's working, it's out of sight, out of mind. And so the, there really isn't, there's this huge opportunity that the people, when they make the decision to go solar, it's an emotional decision. They go, and they wanna make an impact. So being able to, be able to cultivate that relationship, making sure that they know that there's a comfort in knowing that the money they put in, the desire of making that impact is actually being realized. And so that's what our, that's our intention of our, of our company. That's the intention of the product that we uh, launched last year. Sure. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to 
take Phil's question here because it's you know one that kind of uh, you know logically uh, one that I thought about when I was thinking you know heard about the business as well. There, is there any installation required, right? It, for us, no, we're, a, we're purely a software company. Um, I mean, the solar is being installed by the residential solar installers, uh, people's homes. And what we do is we'll come in and we actually interface with the systems that are collecting that data. Um, but in, even before the system gets installed, we are actually already engaging with consumers. Um, we're helping to educate them in the process of, once they sign the contract, we start engaging. We start giving them um, information, educational material for them to understand their system better, to kind of put this in context with their energy use and kind of the world scheme of things. We also give them community maps that show them which neighbors have solar or which neighbors don't have solar. So that allows that homeowner really kind of appeal to that social nature of solar, that social nature of, hum you know, of, of, of us humans and say, hey, I'm gonna go talk to that person or a neighbor comes by and talks to them they can easily show that neighbor, yeah, my panels are made are from LG or from Mission down, the, down in San Antonio. It's these types of conversation where this is where we'll be able to really um, leverage that network effect to try to scale solar in the same kind of exponential growth that you know, other social networks have, have, got, um, have been able to leverage. Let me, let me take this next question from Jordan. Good to see you here, Jordan. Um, and I'll just close off this one. Um, pricing and revenue model. So you've, you've already paid, you know, separately to have solar installed. Now I've got the software that, you know, um, which is your business. And I have now have an interface between what's going on and, and, and the, the benefit of the solar panel. Um, as an investor, you know, what is the pricing revenue model? Yeah, it's interesting. So if you think about it, we are, we're a B to B to C business. And so our end users are the homeowners. And so they get value in knowing what's going on with their project, being educated, being able to know how much their system is producing, how much energy they're using. However, you think about it from the solar company, the solar installer standpoint, there's a strong incentive for them to keep this engagement going. One is just being able to improve customer satisfaction. And so this will help boost their re uh, reviews. And then second, if they're able to get referrals, they're about, that's about 10 times more effective than any sort of cold sales. And so what we're essentially doing is we actually charge the solar companies um, for this service. And they, uh, because we're bringing them significant value back. And so it's, that's our revenue model. We're, we're a SaaS based um, uh, platform that has, um, that has recurring revenue through the solar companies, bringing so value back to them. Um, and it just so happens that the, our product is being used by the homeowners. Hopefully that answers the Jordan's question decently. Well, he's, he's, he's doubled up for you. Uh, uh, who owns the data you gather and what are you free to do with the data? Yeah, so it's, just, it's just like quite interesting. So we have, um, under our terms and agreements, um, terms and conditions, so the homeowners and the solar companies own, own their respective data, at least the, in the raw form. We actually get... Um, we get licensed to be able to use that. And then we own all derivative data that gets collected. And so you're thinking we're, we're pulling in data from both um, from the homeowners and being able to aggregate that data. Um, and so there's opportunities down the road for some sort of ways to uh, monetize on that. Um, we're still in the early stage. Like I mentioned, we launched last year. So the opportunities of those opportunities we've kind of brainstormed around, but uh, we're focused, staying focused on just getting our product out. Um, and into the hands of more and more homeowners. I'll take this question from uh, Dana and I'm gonna kind of expand it into, um, she, she mentions like, what, what do you mean by design thing is what you questioned before around how does it set you apart? And I'm gonna to wanna to kind of broaden that a little bit into energy experience if you can. Yeah, for sure. Um, so design thinking, it's a methodology that's uh, gained a lot of uh, prominence in the past, let's say five, 10 years or so. And really the idea behind it is just empathy, really understanding what the user is really looking for. What are the, what are the experiences? What are the questions that they're asking? What are the experiences that they are looking for? And so the approach is actually pretty methodical where there's a significant amount of um, customer interviews um, followed by a very strong iterative approach of user testing. 
So, um, and so that's what we do. And what we do is on top of that is combine that design think with, with various behavioral for science frameworks to really try to enhance that engagement uh, long-term. Um, yes, mm -hmm. sorry, Scott, would you mind if I, uh, if I shared the anecdote from our sales call earlier? Uh, yeah, go for it, sure. Yes, yeah, so, um, so Scott and I were on a, a sales call with the solar installation business out of North Carolina this afternoon, and we're giving them the pitch on Bodie, and uh, Scott was asking them some questions about their business, and uh, he uncovered this problem that they were, that they were having. Um, and so the owner explained to us his frustration that their solar installation business was very highly reviewed and all their customers loved them, but their rate of referrals was terrible. And he was frustrated because he says, all like, we know that our customers love us, but they're not referring their friends to have solar installed by our company. And so uh, what, what Scott um, has, has invented integrating uh, design thinking uh, into you know, our, our business, um, specifically, and I learned this uh, from Scott, uh, is the, the implementation of a, a, a behavioral psychology specifically called the FOG behavior model, uh, which, which in, in this model, so it identifies that there's three specific things that have to all happen at the same time for a behavior to occur. And that's that uh, an individual has to be motivated, they have to have the tools available to them, and they have to have the, the trigger. And so this prospect that we were spoke, speaking with today, uh, they were motivated in that they love their solar company and they love their solar, and they were triggered in that they were prompted by their you know, solar company to send them referrals, but they lack the tools, the third key element of the FOG behavior model that Scott has built Bodhi around to uh, prompt referrals as one part of our, our revenue uh, stream. And so that's uh, specifically uh, integrating this FOG behavior model and allowing our, our customers to um, be able to motivate their customers uh, to prompt referrals, give them the tools to do so, and then also to trigger those referrals um, is, is huge and, and differentiated. And with, uh, with our existing onboarded customers, we're, we're seeing a, yeah, a definite uh, undeniable you know, uptick in their, in their referral rate that can be attributed to this Bodhi platform. Um, let me just for everyone that's new to the room, please don't forget to register your interest in 17 terawatts via the landing page, um, particularly uh, the investors. And um, so you can get in touch with, with Scott and Emmett. Um, and, and please feel free to answer, you know, ask questions in the Q&A. Um, it's down in the center, center console there. You see Q&A, you can ask the questions and you can upvote other people's questions. Kathy, I'll take yours in a second. I did want to ask quickly about, you know, um, the partnership with Dias, and obviously that's a, that's a big deal. Um, um, and you know, how does it relate to the Australian market? Then how do you see that, you know, relating to um, your growth globally? Yeah. So the partnership with Dias has come. It's it's a great opportunity. Like I mentioned in the pitch, you know, there, the majority of solar homeowners in Australia actually don't have any. Um, idea how their system's performing. And part of that has to do with the cost of implementation thus far, um, which is, and DS has made a, their power sensor is just a low cost smart device that is designed for homeowners just to install it themselves, lowering that cost of installation. And what that's made, you know, lowering the cost of, to such a degree that it's easy for them, for homeowners, to get that monitoring, get that um, uh, that information to make them more aware. And that's when we can actually start to cultivate that relationship. And so that is where, you know, the energy retailers are now much, much more interested. And they're saying, wait, if I can, if my homeowners, if my customers are more satisfied with their solar systems and I'm making that possible, well, can, can I do two things? One, can I actually get new, acquire new customers? if I offer this, and then two, if they're happy, they'll stick around longer. 
I mean, with Australia, with the deregulated markets, it's hyper-competitive. You know, churn is really, really high. And so that is really the big opportunity that we have right now with the Diaz partnership. And then second, in the U.S., we do have monitoring right now, but it's expensive. And so all our customers, are, which are solar companies, they're all looking for new um, for new technology. And so what we're hoping to be able to do is, with our partnership with Diaz, is really help get the power um, that power sensor launched here in the U.S. Um, towards the end of this year. So yeah, so not only just to kind of recap, it's going to be you know that the success of that partnership in Australia is just going to be you know you know used as a land, you know a launch pad for you and in, in, in all these other markets. Yeah, for sure. Because like I, like I said in the pitch, it, Australia's ten years ahead of us. So we're it's, instead we're essentially having a peek into the future, at least from the U.S. perspective. And so our idea is that if we can come down to Australia um, and develop a solution that really works for the Australian market, our goal is to take that back home to the U.S. and then expand that globally. Um, so that's yeah, that's that, and that was a, that was the main reason we came down to Australia, and it's been. Um, it was a great learning experience and the opportunities are, are definitely being developed at the moment. Um, quick, the question from uh, Kathy, perhaps more around to the you know, product itself. Does your software have any demand response applications? Um, as it currently stands, we don't yet have um, a demand response feature. We currently do have the, the capabilities, the technical capabilities. I mean, we are pulling in data um, and we are, we have all those communications channels. We communicate through text and through the app um, and we have various visualizations which are amenable to that. And so I think if we couple that with a very effective um, demand response algorithm, then um, yeah, I think it could be um, a, a really good opportunity to try to um, expand the different feature sets that are that Bodhi 2.0 can, um, can serve. Thanks, Jordan. Um, Jordan, leaving there. Um, business model. What What are your plans following Startup Bootcamp? I mean, it's been a wild ride for you guys. Big day today. What What's next? It's a good question. We are. So we've got um, the current product that we have, Bodhi. What we're calling Bodhi One Point This is currently expanding. We're We're scaling up. Down, um, we're scaling back here in the U.S. Uh, across the with solar companies across the U.S. and so really the me the next step is to you know take this partnership with Diaz um, and we're in discussions with various energy retailers down in Australia and so be able to just launch that product launch um, and test that that our solution out in the Australian market and so one of the key things there is we're looking at that Australian the energy retailer Bodhi 2.0 as a growth opportunity for us because. I mean, most of our customers in the U.S. right now, we're, you know, we're acquiring users at the scale of, you know, let's say, um, let's say 500 to 1,000 per company here in the U.S. Um, per year. And, you know, if we really want to try to make an impact with climate change, with our business, it's really going to require that big step change or really that's the big opportunity. So being able to work with an energy retailer where the customer base is in the, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions. That's the big growth opportunity that we're that we're looking for. Just because we got you know new people coming in and out of the room together, can you give me a little bit about a bit more? Let's go back to the background around uh, uh, seventeen terawatts. For anyone that's joining the room, they can jump in. Please ask some questions. Please register your interest with seventeen terawatts via the. Um, the landing page where you where you were watching the live stream. But if we can go back for all the, the newbies in the room, Scott, and run through it again, mate. No, no. What, what about this? Let me ask. Let me ask the a question back to the the attendees here. Sure. Oh. Um, do you guys know what seventeen terawatts? Why the company's name seventeen terawatts, or what the significance of that is? And so maybe I'll let them um, answer that in the chat or so, um, and I'll let Emmett kind of rehash what um, the origin stories of our company. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, it takes it takes 10 watts to power an iPhone and it takes 17 terawatts to power humanity. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's that, cool. uh, yeah. So I, I love it. Uh, and uh, one of, uh, 
I, I, w I was really excited to learn uh, that when you when you start your company name with a numeral, uh, then you get to go first in all of these these presentations, and you're listed first on all of the. <laughs> <laughs> Very handy. I thought that was a, a really uh, uh, honestly like a, re a really good insight uh, that I, that I've learned uh, from Scott. Um, but yeah, I mean, going going back to the the DS uh, partnership. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that we're uh, able to announce that. So I, I was able to, so I'm back in Austin, Texas now, um, but I was able, so uh, sorry, I'm, uh, my name is Emmett Marinker. I'm the head of business development with 17 terawatts. And I was able to uh, be, at, be in Melbourne taking part in the startup bootcamp program um, before I basically had to be evacuated back home to the United States on, on State Department orders. Um, and in my interactions with, uh, with, with Diaz, with, with uh, Sundar, Pete, uh, and it, it, literally everybody at that organization that I met with, I was so uh, just blown away by how smart and how generous uh, everyone that I encountered and interacted with that organization was. And this is one of these organizations, like it, you know, there, there's lots of individuals that I know that I can say this about, but uh, it's, it's rare to, you know, be able to say that, it, it, you know, want to see an organization uh, succeed uh, as, as badly as, as I do for, for DS. And so, um, you know, given, you know, how, how, how intelligent every, everyone is over there and how, how generous they are with their, with their time and knowledge, for me, that's a, a tremendous vote of confidence that they would be, you know, open and excited to, to partner with us in this Bodhi platform uh, that we're creating and this power sensor uh, device that they've, they've invented is, is truly innovative and novel. So, you know, for comparison, so it's a device, it's, it's this big and um, it allows a homeowner to see what their house is doing energy wise, like what's getting, you know, their solar is producing and what they're consuming uh, at their home. And there's similar devices that exist and they cost $500. And Dias has invented a product that uh, does this at a, at a fraction of that cost. And in, with this partnership, um, we're able to access the data that this power sensor will produce in this uh, th this partnership opens the opportunity uh, for 17 terawatts of every single home uh, in, uh, in Australia that has solar on it. And yeah, we're, we're I mean, yeah, we couldn't really, really couldn't be more excited about this. Um, and for, you know, taking part in the startup bootcamp program, you know, the introductions that they were able to make and the, the uh, assistance that they were able to offer. Um, I, yeah, I would say it's, it, you know, our, our development as a startup has absolutely been accelerated uh, through through this program. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that, that's on the Australia front. And then, I mean, all all those uh, you know all those aspects of of the power sensor are equally, if not more, true over here in the United States as well. Um, and yeah, that that product, the power sensor, would just would totally crush it in the United States. And I know that Scott and I and the rest of our team at 17 terawatts are really excited uh, to, yeah, use our use our network and um, do everything we can to, you know, when when the time comes and DS is ready, you know, try to bring that product over to the United States, and then we can offer a, yeah, OD DS package and take over this home uh, solar monitoring market that's going to presently a, you know, small billion dollar market, but in the future will be a much larger billion dollar market. Um, so, yeah. Can I, can I ask Emmett, just reminded me, and I did want to, you know, dig a little bit deeper into the partnership with DS from the, I guess, from a distribution point of view, you said you're talking about um, possibly every home in Australia. How, how is that kind of facilitated? How are they, um, how are they giving you access to those customers? Um, so, so sorry, how is, how is, how is DS? How are we getting access to the customers? Yeah. DS is helping you from like more like a distribution point of view. Is that right? 
Yes. Yeah, so, 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 uh, so DS is helping us in a very large part uh, through through the connections that DS has to the Australian energy market. So it's definitely a, a challenge that we experienced upon our arrival to Australia. Is like, no, actually, we don't. You know, we're Americans. We don't actually know anyone in the Australian energy market. And DS has been, again, like extremely generous in offering introductions uh, uh, to us there. Um, so, yeah. So this uh, this Bodhi two point product that we're working on now. Um, so like, like Scott was saying, so the, the play is that there are presently over 2 million residential solar homes in Australia. And most of those residential solar homeowners do not know what their solar energy system is doing. Like they don't know if it's producing to their expectations. They don't know if it's making the environmental impact that they uh, are expecting. They don't know if it's saving them the amount of money that they thought it would when they signed their sales proposal. And solar array is very expensive. Um, it costs about a third as much in Australia as it does in the United States. Still, it's a substantial investment. And so what the, the play is that we're working with these energy retailers like Energy Australia is one of the biggest ones. And so these energy retailers, they are faced with some really, you know, substantial business challenges. So specifically uh, customer retention uh, is very poor. So in Victoria, customer retention for these energy retailers, or sorry, churn is at 22%. Annually, wow. so that means every five years, uh, effectively, these energy retailers have to completely rebuild their customer base, and that is expensive, as you might expect. And then uh, on the acquisition side as well, so you have to reacquire customers for all these 22% of customers that you've lost every year, and that's really expensive. And so the play that we're working on with Dias is that we know that there are two million residential solar homes in Australia. And we know that most of these solar homeowners don't know what their solar energy system is doing. And we're taking a really good guess that most of them are dissatisfied because they don't know what they're doing and what their solar is doing. And they would be very interested in knowing what their solar array is doing, right? So, um, so the play is to identify some energy retailers like Energy Australia who uh, want to gain more customers and retain them. And so we can target, we can work together and target these solar energy customers. And we can say, hey, uh, we're gonna offer you this, you know, badass DS power sensor. And then the 17 I, I saw I saw a badass in a deck. Right. <laughs> and uh, and the 17 terawatts Bodhi platform. And then that is going to tell you everything you ever really wanted to know about your solar energy. And because the energy retailer is able to offer this to you, that makes them differentiated over their competitors. And so energy retailer business is really tough as well. So like they sell kilowatt hours, the ultimate commodity. And so when in, you know, in, in commodity selling business, uh, it's really tough. There's only, it's, it's tough to sell a product that everybody else is selling. And so there's only two ways when you do that to sell a commodity uh, to actually increase your margin. Um, and so one of the ways is to ob obfuscate your pricing, you know, to disguise it and slip in like hidden fees. And then that decreases trust from your customers and damages you in the long run. Uh, and the other way uh, is to uh, figure out how to, create a value add service on top of your commodity product. And so the idea is that this DS power sensor, uh, 17 terawatts Bodhi platform creates this value added service for these 2 million solar customers who are out there that don't know what their solar energy system is doing. And so there's an energy retailer that says, hey, we can tell you what that's doing. We can solve that problem for you. We're gonna be your energy company. And then that solar customer says, hey, this is really cool. I'm going to continue to be your customer for years and years to come. And then so it's, uh, they've acquired this customer at a lower customer acquisition cost and they've retained them for longer. And 
ultimately also, by the way, this energy company is able to sell these solar energy customers other energy products that come online in the future. Uh, batteries, higher powered solar modules, uh, you know, an annual maintenance service, whatever. Uh, so that's, that's the play. So for anyone else that's just kind of joining us in the room, please go back to the landing page whenever you get a chance. After this, don't jump out right now and register your interest to talk to Emmett and Scott um, if you're interested in investing or learning more. Um, the, you know, the, uh, what I found really interesting about, you, you know, um, you guys was also, aside from the, the, cra you know, the great team you have um, well, just online right now, is you also have one of the... Uh, is it the board members from Solar City on your board? Is that right? And then, yeah, and then, right. And then, well, well, he used to be. He was, um, that's right. So it was actually really interesting. He, um, so his name is um, Don Kendall, who, um, storied life, but he used to be the former board member of Solar City. And, Solar, and he actually saw, oversaw their acquisition by, by Tesla. Wow. Um, I was introduced to him kind of early on in our company. And met him over for coffee, told him what we were doing. He's like, this is exactly what Tesla needed, our solar city needed. And um, yeah, he became our, um, he became our investor um, first. And just uh, more recently um, joined our board of advisors. Incredible. And like without, you know, I don't know what, what, you know, arrangements you have in place or whether we're even allowed to talk about it, but is, do you think that could be a possible, you know, go to market for you guys in the US, piggybacking on, you know, Tesla's success in, in solar? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely true. I mean, I think um, we're getting more and more, um, you know, this is a, this is a, what we found was that this was a wide, widespread problem um, for solar companies. I mean, they are, they just haven't had the tools to be able to interface with customers. And this is, and that's simply because it's just a very immature business, even though it's a hundred billion dollar industry worldwide, they're still trying to use tools that been, I mean, they've been navigating a fracture set of, of disparate software solutions that have been made for other industries and trying to melt, you know, mold that into their business. And it just hasn't been working. And so only in the past few years, and ourselves included, have we, you know, have you, has the industry started seeing things that have been built specifically for solar? And in our case, we're the ones who are like building a, something that is specifically customer centric and that's been the novelty um that's we're the first movers on that and the, the solar companies are recognizing that and so um so that yeah we've got a lot of interest in um and in growing our business that way um and well, so yeah we'll see where you know we'll see where, what sort of potential um exits that might lead to down the road once we are able to you know dominate the, the market absolutely um for anyone new in the room, please register your interest to offer on the landing page in 17 terawatts. And, um, and we kind of do this in loops. You know how we do it, guys. Um, if I can go back. Oh, here we go. Trevor. Uh, we planted him in the audience. Um, do you think the first mover advantage is sustainable? And uh, what does the future roadmap look like? It's a great question. Though. No, that's actually really true. I mean, first mover advantage, there is an advantage to it. Um, and is it sustainable? Like with all software companies, we're constantly improving. And one of the key things, going back to the question that Dana Hogan had asked, what's design thinking? Well, design thinking is really asking your users, your customers, what's working, what's not working, and let's improve on that. And so we actually have a pretty strong feedback. We've got a um, head of customer experience who is intimately involved in the, um, in the, in the use of in in the customer relationship, he figures out what's working, what's not, um, brings that back into us. He and then we get that the product roadmap um, um, fit that into the product roadmap. So we're constantly improving. The next step really is to take our device, which is you know controlling just for the solar and, and the home energy, but expanding out into connected devices. So you start to think about connected. What are the other connected devices? Well, it's their batteries that are coming on board. We're not talking about just normal batteries that you're that are just sitting here. You've, there's the there's a, the rapid growth of EVs, electric vehicles, and how does that energy system, which has been completely separated from the home energy system before, now it's actually combined. And how what type of um, interesting 
um, synergies or interesting algorithms can we come up with that maximizes the, the output or maximizes the, that potential of sun coming in to energy being used in the car at the right times, at the right moments, and really providing a more cohesive uh, view of that home en new home energy system. I mean, one of the things that we always have been, we really think about in our company um, at a high level is something that we call the new energy consumer. And these are people that, you know, like I mentioned in the pitch, once they go solar, they just have different expectations. I mean, they want, they want things to be easy. They want all their, all, all the various aspects to be tied to each other and they're willing to pay for it. And so that's kind of where, that is exactly where our company sits, try to wrap that all together, but in a way that has an interface, a user experience that actually resonates with them. It's not about just opening a bill or opening up an app and says, hey, you generated 40 kilowatts hours today. Who even knows what that means? So it's about putting that in context and that's, that's our goal. And so we can continue to, to do that. I think that's where we can really keep that first mover advantage and be able to sustain that in the long run. Does that, um, given you kind of like the first mover, particularly in big markets like the US, does that almost, you know, um, open up the opportunity, I suppose, as becoming almost the, the default um, operating system for all this hardware? Is that, or like, is it gonna, you know, yeah, is it always being open now because, of, because you're the first? I don't know, that's actually really interesting. I'd say, um, you know, so, we, so we're a software um, platform. And so what we have decided to do is we will integrate with other products, both software and hardware products. And we did that strategically because our customer base, their software tools that they use are all kind of varied. But we, what we're started to see is that there are people who want our product, who are currently using various software tools or hardware tools, which haven't made it open. So we can't, um, we can't access their data via an API. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, that, um, and so that's causing them to change. That's caused, that's that pressure from those customers to back to their original vendors. And that's gonna start to change things. So it, it is moving towards that direction, Chris. I'm hoping that that's true. I'd be, that's, that'd be amazing if it was that we became that overall operating system for the whole home connected um, energy system. And if that's true, then yeah, that's, um, we've got a lot of work to be able to do to tie everything in in a way that, um, that works and makes sense. I'm proud, proud to be interviewing you guys. It's going to be good. Um, what are the, what are some of the other markets, the interesting markets that, you, that you're looking at at the moment or like, where's the interest being coming from? Yeah, I'd say, I mean, all the interest, I mean, we've been, I, I think we focused right now. So right now it's the, the, the big focus is on solar. Um, and we've had other investors who say, oh, wait, can you do this for other industries too? Right now our ex, our expertise is in energy. And so we really think that there is, um, if we stick in the vertical, the opportunity is actually pretty big. It's not just solar, but it's energy in general. And then from there, taking it into those, to the connected home, into the um, home energy services. And that is actually a pretty big market in itself. And I think that's where, if we focus our expertise in those areas, that's gonna be, um, that'll give us a lot to work on um, for a while. Um, you know, and I think there are always opportunities down the road later on for, possible expansions into adjacent verticals, but um, we'll see, we'll see where that leads. Um, I'm, I'm being given the, I give, I get the messages on the side here, make sure we're keeping up to date and I'm looking to wrap up around uh, 4 PM in a few minutes. So I wanted to um, take a, a couple more questions here. One was, uh, you know, for any of the entrepreneurs um, that are watching that are thinking about startup bootcamp, um, you know, how, how, what was your experience like in, 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 um, in the program? And, um, yeah, I'm interested to know, you know, what, what the recommendation would be. Yeah. Um, so let me, and then let me start this off and then I'll, I want to, um, pass it on to you. Um, so we were lucky enough to get Emmett, um, after 
his previous company that he, he led the Austin office for a company called Civic Solar. They got acquired by a bigger energy distributor. Um, and so he was, um, he was available. And one of the things that he asked, he was talking to me about, I knew him beforehand. He's like, Scott, I want to do something impactful. I want to, I'm thinking, I want to, I'm thinking about being an entrepreneur. And it's like, I mean, it's really hard. It's really <laughs> tough. Um, and then I was like, well, you know what? This is opportunity. You want to, how about, you know, you talked about wanting to be, do a startup. How about coming on board with us? And how about going down to Australia, figure out if there's a business down there, a Bodhi 2.0. Um, and funny enough is um, Emmett said yes. And even more surprising, his wife said yes. Um, so Emmett, I'll let you take it from there. Uh, thanks, Scott. Yeah. Um, so from my, you know, from my expect perspective, so I was able to uh, actually be in Melbourne taking part uh, in the Start Bootcamp program. And so uh, and for me personally, so Scott has some multiple of, you know, more, more experience in entrepreneurship than I do. I, you know, for example, didn't even know how hard it was to be an entrepreneur. Um, and so for me and in, in, in my experience and my you know, professional desire to, to be an entrepreneur, I, the startup bootcamp program, like really, honestly, it, exceeded, it thoroughly exceeded my expectations. Uh, so uh, here in the States, we have pretty much countless of these accelerator incubator programs. And honestly, they generally have a negative reputation. Uh, and so Scott gave me this really cool opportunity to come down to Melbourne and do this startup bootcamp uh, program. I, I didn't really know what to expect, but I had low expectations. Uh, but then after the, the first week, which I would describe as one of the top three most challenging weeks of my professional existence, um, you know, it really became obvious to me how much value uh, the Startup Bootcamp program adds. And I was, yeah, just uh, blown away. And for me personally, and my professional growth, uh, yeah, it was, it's, yeah, uh, like a, you know, graduate, uh, you know, experience uh, for sure um, from Startup Bootcamp. So, um, let me, let me, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, let me, let me take this one from Anand. Um, is the focus on an empowered customer who has an idea of what's going on in terms of solar in his, her household, or this is a large game around moving up the value chain into looking at the grid and demand and supply. This is a big, this is a heavy question. Uh, and demand and supply side management and rolling up. Are you looking at home automation and using the energy system as a gateway? He's, he's, he's yeah. So um, how about yes. Um, to the second question, um, yeah, so yeah, so solar is a gateway into the home energy system of the future, and so very much true to that second question and none. To answer your first question, our focus and the mission of our company is really on that customer experience, that user experience, because that is an area that is, like I mentioned in the pitch, it's currently orphaned. But what's interesting is it's not just about, no, you know, it's not, these aren't siloed areas. And so, for example, you know, if you focus on the consumers, there are ways of really impact, you know, by empowering the consumers, there are ways to really make some significant impacts on the, what you're calling the um, upstream side, the grid, um, into the grid and the demand side. And the ways to really think about this is, you know, demand response is one, but also, you know, there's time of use rates that are being deployed in the U.S. People don't understand that, uh, any, any of those. And there's a lot of different ways in which, and then let me give you another example. Let's say handling the duck curve, the solar duck curve, if you're aware of that or not. Um, you know, most of the solutions or potential solutions to handling the duck curve is with hardware and hardware is expensive putting batteries out at these substations to try to handle the ducker well a, a much more a much more efficient it won't be able to solve the entire duck curve but a much more efficient way of doing that is through behavioral change and behavioral change will, will happen once 
you get the energy awareness that's being cultivated. You then you give them the tools. We, going back to the whole fog behavior model that Emmett had mentioned earlier, you have to be able to properly motivate them and you got to give them the tools. And then finally you have to give them a trigger. So that's all the different things that we can do to help empower that consumer to make that decision themselves. But that has huge opportunities or huge value back to the grid operators. And we're doing the same, it's kind of that same idea um, with our general product, which is we bring value to the consumers, we empower them, and you know who realizes the benefits? It's the energy companies. And surprisingly, not surprisingly, because they're realizing the benefits, they're the ones who are paying for it, not the consumers. So it's, it's a way to get the entire energy system operating more efficiently, more sustainably, um, lowering the cost for everyone um, in the, you know, and so, and moving us in that right path towards a more, you know, cleaner energy future. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, last, I'm interested in, you know, connecting with 17, take um, from the and Scott, thank you for joining us and um, yeah, thank you very much, Scott, and, um, for uh, the time you made today. Appreciate it. And thank you, Scott, for getting me. Uh, Bye, guys. Really appreciate it. You too, Jaime. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Amanda. Thank, thank you, Chris. Thanks, thanks, Amanda.